Hello, everybody. Thank you for inviting me here today. Uh, I'm here to talk about this Southern New England multi-state hurricane evacuation study. Uh, and it's, it's a study that produces some great products. Uh, the National Hurricane Program is uh, a partnership between the Army Corps of Engineers, FEMA, and the, uh, NOAA, specifically the National Hurricane Center. And for many years has been conducting uh, hurricane evacuation studies I sure can. Has for many years been conducting hurricane evacuation studies from the Gulf Coast right up along the Atlantic up uh, to New England. Um, the, the first studies I got involved in started in Connecticut back in, uh, I think the, the final studies were produced in 1993 or 4, and we worked our way up uh, from Connecticut up to Maine, uh, finishing Maine in about 2007. So those studies got pretty dated and there was limited funding nationwide for conducting these studies and uh, recently the process for that has gotten very equitable in that they're looking at the, the date of, uh, of the studies and the population at risk and several other factors and prioritizing studies to be redone and we're very fortunate in that we were able to make a case for restudying Southern New England and so we have some great products out now and, and more on the way over the next year. So this, is, this slide is basically some of the arguments or, or proposals that we're making for restudying Southern New England. And you can see some of, the, uh, some of the issues with the outdated studies here. And we had always done studies state by state, so just Connecticut, just Rhode Island, just Massachusetts. And so we, we proposed this multi-state study, which really actually was recommended by one of our partners, Massachusetts Emergency Management. It's a great idea. Uh, to account for a traffic flow between the states. Um, also proposed it as, um, we could save money by doing through several states at once, economies of scale, uh, one set of traffic and census data, have current, dates, uh, current data for all states. Somebody gave this slide to me showing New England within Texas, and I didn't believe it, but I did verify it, that's actually <laughs> <laughs> So during hurricanes, very important to have communication between states, between communities, when there's an evacuation, and, and by studying these three states at once, we're able to improve upon that. Also, the timing was good. The National Hurricane Center had recently updated what they call the slosh basins. That's their numerical model that they run for hurricanes, sea, lake, and overland surge from hurricanes. So there was very current data for both uh, this NY3 basin, which covered New York and parts of Connecticut, and the Boston 2 basin, which was a very large area of coverage from uh, the rest of Connecticut all the way up through New Hampshire. Uh, there was a, there's two sets of data that we need to produce uh, these hurricane surge inundation maps. One is el really good elevation data and the other is the slosh basin, slosh bottle results from the hurricane center which gives us the water surface. So you have the water surface and the land and where they intersect which gives you your extent of flooding. So there was recently very good elevation data um, that had been collected by FEMA for their risk map program and also the uh, stimulus fund LIDAR data collection um, that was launched really for the whole uh, east coast and we, were, we benefited from that. We also recently updated the Connecticut and Rhode Island surge inundation maps in 2009. So all of these reasons put us in a good position to, uh, to keep going and, and get better information for our area. The New York Hurricane Evacuation Study, that's what HES stands for, Hurricane Evacuation Study, had recently, recently been completed and that would help us look at cross-state evacuation traffic flow uh, between New York and Connecticut and a New Hampshire Seacoast All Hazards Evacuation Study that looked, looked at uh, hazards beyond hurricane, but including hurricanes as well, would allow us to, to look at cross-state evacuation with Mass and Maine. So the current status is good. Um, in Connecticut, we, we provided the final hurricane surge inundation maps in August 2012, and the draft hurricane evacuation maps, so the, the hurricane surge inundation maps show 
the worst case landward extent of category one, two, three, and four <coughs> flooding. And the hurricane evacuation maps sort of simplify that down to two hurricane evacuation zones to help emergency management officials more easily recommend, rarely order, but recommend evacuations of certain areas. And I'll show you examples of both of those maps. In Rhode Island, we delivered the final hurricane surge inundation maps in May 2009. When I say delivered, our primary points of delivery are the, the state emergency management agency uh, in each of the states, so Rhode Island Emergency Management Agency, and the communities. So we provide several copies of, the map, of these maps to the state, hard copy maps and PDFs um, to the state, and then five copies to each community. And the final hurricane evacuation maps were, were just delivered prior to this hurricane season. Massachusetts, we deliver the final hurricane surge inundation maps, and their hurricane evacuation maps are draft. They're out to the communities. It's really very important for the communities to develop these evacuation zones themselves. That way they feel um, like they've had input to them and that they can implement these evacuation zones or use them in their evacuation orders or recommendations. It's much harder for, for me sitting in an office to kind of figure out what areas they would want to evacuate. Um, so we really need their input. Evacuation maps, they take this, the hurricane surge, which is just a, obviously a very irregular surge line, that would, areas that could get flooded during hurricanes, and they try to bring those areas back to major roads, a major highway or something that emergency management officials can say, everybody south of this road needs to evacuate in this community. Um, The evacuation zones are overlaid on census data, and so therefore we can extract the population within those zones, and then that, we use those populations um, to determine numbers of people that would uh, load onto the roadways to evacuate, and ultimately how long it would take those people to evacuate. And as I said, created with significant input from the local emergency management officials. Here's the inundation map. Um, you have a link to the website where these maps are. They're also on the Rhode Island Emergency Management Agency website. The colors are a little bit different, a little hard to see here. The lighter green is um, category one hurricane surge inundation, worst case. Out of all the models that the Hurricane Center runs, that's expected to be the worst case category one flooding. The darker green is category two. <coughs> The, light, the yellow is category three and the red is category four. They don't model category five hurricanes for this far north. Uh, they just don't see, think that they're possible in this area. So that's a hurricane surge inundation map. And it's a nice product. It's very visual. It's, uh, it's, it's a pleasure to work on these studies because you can actually hand something very useful to the, to the customers at the end of it. Here's the hurricane evacuation map. Now this is for Barrington. Both of these maps are for Barrington. And you can see that it sort of generalizes the hurricane surge areas into two zones, an evacuation zone A and an evacuation zone B. Uh, a obviously being the red. Uh, red signifies, in this case, warning. It's, it's the most likely scenario, a category one or two hurricane in yellow. Uh, is adds in some extra areas that would have to evacuate in a category three or four hurricane. So another component of the hurricane evacuation studies is the, these behavioral analyses that are, that's done by a contractor, the Hazards Management Group out of Tallahassee, Florida. They've been doing these for a very long time. They did the first one for our area back in the mid 80s. Um, at that time, it was very limited in the information they collected. This time, it was much more substantial. So these guys do this type of work from the Gulf Coast right up to us. What it consisted of was, in each state, phone interviews. So they called 300 people within the category one to two surge zone. 
200 within the category three to four surge zone and 100 inland of the category four surge zone. Um, and they asked them a long list of questions. I think that the survey was designed to take about 20 minutes because it's important not to burden the public when you're doing this kind of thing. But it asked them both what they expect they would do in a hurricane and then most more specific, well, not more specifically, but also what they did during Sandy, Isaac, excuse me, Sandy, Earl, was it Isaac? I think it was Isaac also. Um, so interesting, you get different responses. You get so many more people say they would intend to evacuate than when you ask the questions, what did you actually do? And uh, the behavioral scientists um, with the hazards management group know how to work with that data and ultimately they come up with recommendations for uh, what percentage of the people in those zones you can expect to evacuate, uh, what percentage would go to a public shelter, for instance, so you can start planning for shelter, public shelter need and, and compared to capacity. And so we have the shelter analysis where we'll work with folks um, mentioned here to come up with uh, what's the available shelter capacity and what's the available shelter need. The transportation analysis is the next step. That's also performed by a contractor that's done this work in a lot of areas, including Maine, New Hampshire, New York. And as I said, they take, these products all kind of build up. They take the products of um, the, the population loading onto the roadways and, uh, and from the different states, and they model that and determine how long it takes for those people to get out of evacuation or surge areas. Identify critical links that you may need to um, post a you know, law enforcement official at, and they determine these evacuation clearance times. Um, so by 2014 hurricane season, we expect to have those three products finalized uh, for all three states. Uh, we have a website where we have all of our products Available. I think you guys have this website on your on your uh, thumb drives. Uh, the reports are not finalized yet. It's old reports that are up there now, but the maps that I showed you are all are all have all been updated and posted. I want to mention Paul Mori. He's back here. Uh, Paul and uh, Paul's uh, my counterpart at FEMA. Real pleasure to work with on this. Um, Paul brings a lot of things um, to the to the hurricane Prime program that I don't. So we work real well together, and uh, it's been a real uh, pleasure to work with him and, and the states and locals on this study. Uh, 